Hi, Internet and Casey. This is Melly with 25 and 52. I am talking to you on Saturday, when I, by which point I have finally figured out a uh, video blog topic for the moment. And so I just read a comic book about Captain America that I'm not sure if it is officially, officially part of Marvel Universe, whatever. Um, part of the standard Marvel Universe, I mean. But it could be, and um, I'm personally going to continue believing slash pretending that it is. Um, it contains part of the story behind the super soldier serum that you don't normally hear. Um, because, you know, like in the Captain America movie, uh, the story apparently changes around a lot. I don't actually know that much about it. But basically, it's all, oh, Germany is trying to make superhumans. We have to also make superhumans to fight them. World War II. Ooh. Uh, let's take this uh, poor kid, you know, child of immigrants and whatever, champion for human rights, and give him the super soldier serum, and he will all go off and do great things and possibly be propaganda and both and stuff. Um, and so this is this book here that I just read is basically the what they don't tell you. Um, it centers around a few black men, um, well, one in particular is named Isaiah. He and a few others, um, enlist, and they're, you know, they experience racism before, during basic training, all that, and at a certain point, someone... Spoiler alert here. Sorry. That's where it's going to like... Um, someone goes, all right, we need your 300 uh, black soldiers. And they take them off to a secret location in the middle of the night and kill half of them and take the other half away for horrific science experiments. Testing the super soldier serum, trying to figure out what dosages will make people superhuman and actually survive it, and cataloging side effects and stuff. Um, and it's just, you know, it's bone chilling because this sort of thing, you hear a lot about this sort of thing happening in Nazi Germany and stuff like that, where they used people in horribly unethical experiments, and they do showcase that in this book as well. But people sort of hand wave over similar things happening in the U.S. with the sole exception that is held up sometimes of the uh, Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Um, but you know, like that's not the only unethical scientific research that occurred. And so it talks about, it follows these men through, you know, doing war shit and ostensibly rescuing people and trying to do the right thing. At one point, one of them is reading a comic book about this Captain America guy, and they're like, huh, this sounds a lot like us. It started a year after. Hmm. And so that's how they learned that they were <laughs> used as scientific guinea pigs so that the white guy could, you know, go ahead and receive what little benefit they got out of this whole thing and get the glory for it. Um, stuff goes on. One of them ends up in the Captain America uniform, uh, tries to do some heroic things, and ends up killing a lot of people in a concentration camp in the process. So that was that was difficult to read. Uh, apparently, he eventually gets imprisoned, and for the crime of stealing the Captain America uniform, you see, not like it was totally... It was, it was given to him by his commanding officer. I'm not sure what else he was supposed to do. I mean, the answer is there's no good answer. And there's no right answer. And sometimes you're put in places where that's the case, particularly if you're in a marginalized population. So it's put together as he may have died. He probably didn't die. He's a folk hero for a lot of black people. Eventually you find out that his wife, who you saw at the beginning of the comic, um, who's a professor of comparative religion, uh, is telling his... Her, her husband's story to Steve Rogers and it ends with the meeting it's just a punch in the gut kind of the whole the whole story is for any number of reasons both you know exposing this racism that you know it seems ridiculously likely for how 
the super soldier shit would have happened if the Marvel Universe is anything like our universe when it comes to racism, which sure went up. It basically is. Um, and also for the slightly chilling reason of I don't think this is ever really mentioned again. So Steve Rogers, you know, here, ch hero, champion of human rights, just completely, you know, continues being complicit in this cover up of horrible things that happen to people. Like, it's never explicitly said in the book. Maybe he does. Maybe I haven't actually read Captain America comic books, so maybe he does, but I don't think so. It's sadly realistic um, regarding America and race and a bunch of horrible things. So that's my super cheerful Saturday morning message to you. It's a really well-written comic book, though. Um, personally, I wasn't super fan of the art style, but yeah, I would still recommend it. It's called Truth, Red, White, and Black. Um, I just spoiled a bunch of it with this summary, and I apologize for that. I noticed at some point that the way I pay attention to race is frequently brought up by something in geek culture. Um, like, there was a period of time in high school where one of my friends recommended one of Octavia Butler's books to me, and I read it, and I went, this is amazing, um, because I was going through a science fiction phase. This definitely happens pretty frequently. Geek. I don't remember which of her books it was, but she always writes from the perspective of a black woman, and not just from a character who happens to be black and happens to be a woman. She talks about race and African heritage and all this stuff. Um, <laughs> and come again to that sentence. But while I first went, <gasps> because it's someone writing from a woman's perspective that is definitely a woman's perspective, not just a character who happens to be a woman, you know, I started paying attention to the race stuff in it too, and I had never really thought about things in that way. And this is, you know, after I'd been through American history classes and learned about the civil rights movement and read things by Martin Luther King and all that stuff. Um, and I don't remember if it was before, or after, around the same time as I, as the uh, uh, class I took in high school for that was uh, African American literature, which gave me some good perspectives on how people who don't look like me have legitimately looked at and experienced and written about their histories. Which, you know, is important. Um, I feel like it's something that more people need to be exposed to besides that one Langston Hughes poem that everyone, you know, puts in there and uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, talking about race. The I Have a Dream speech, you know, it goes beyond that. And still, even I, like, I don't know that much and, you know, I'm white and so people probably 100% should not be learning race stuff from me. So I'm not really sure where I'm going with this, but it's a story that's continuing and I'm trying to pay a little bit more attention to race issues in ways that, both in ways that have just sort of been going on around me, whatever, and in ways that I can potentially do something about, or at least not make things that much worse regarding my actions. So I guess that's that's my story for the moment. Um, it was great having you in town this week, and it was lovely to see you. I'll make another one of these on Thursday. Bye.